Welcome back everyone to Crusader Kings 3. If you have not seen this story from the beginning, there is a link in the description that will take you all the way back to the very first episode. Check that out if you would. For the rest of you, it is now May of 1374. Britannia is expanding her influence on the European continent, and we're hoping that continues as the Holy Roman Emperor uh, seems to be really the only major world power, or at least uh, power in this part of the world that can really take us on. So let's move on and see what happens. Well, this is something. My sister Cecilia was executed uh, on the Prince of Leon's orders. That's her husband. And of course, the alliance has expired. The question is, why was she executed? I don't know if that's something we can discover or not. But yeah, she was executed. And that's kind of a big deal. Uh, and I almost feel like I ought to go to war with him over that. But uh, we're going to scheme for murder instead. We're going to gain some stress over that. But I haven't really used my intrigue skills for any nefarious purposes so far so we're gonna go ahead and do that uh, we're gonna see who we can get in on this and it doesn't seem like anybody's particularly inclined to join so I'm gonna look and see who we can get that would be fairly easy this guy seems like we could probably get him with a little bit of a gift I don't know if that'll make a difference or not doesn't appear all right, well, we're just going to have to hope for the best. The existence of my plot has been discovered. That didn't take long. Well, it suddenly does not have much hope of success. I guess that was a long shot at best. All right, we have a 5% chance of success. Um, we're going to say, no, let's not do it. In fact, I, I probably should just give up on this scheme altogether. It's, got very little chance of success anyway I don't think we need to sway Duke William anymore because we've gotten along pretty well with him so let's go ahead and take a look at my vassals for a minute who are we not getting along with that we should be working on it seems like we're actually getting along pretty well with most folks uh, I am a little bit concerned about the Duke of Kent who has a pretty substantial army so I think we're gonna work on swaying him for now I also want to check and see what it would take to get absolute crown authority. 1379, so in three years and 259 more prestige, we could actually push for that. That would be really interesting uh, because we've never been anywhere close to that. Well then, it looks like the Kaiser of the Holy Roman Empire has died. And now my son-in-law is the Kaiser, which means my daughter and heir... Uh, this could get really interesting because unless something dramatic changes or for some reason they don't have children, if they do have a child, that child will stand to inherit the thrones of Britannia and the Holy Roman Empire. That could be a huge step forward in this game. Of course, we could be about to screw all of that up because my wife is pregnant. So far, we just have the four daughters. But if we have a son, that all goes by the wayside. I'm at the place now where I actually don't want to have a son. Because I want to have the chance to inherit both these titles. We'll find out here in a second. Another daughter. Alright, we keep the streak alive. Five for five with girls. Crazy. Alright. We got a Liberty Faction that's declaring against us. So we're going to have to deal with that. We also have to get a new counselor, a new marshal. Just an, oh boy, that's not very good. The King of Wales is the best marshal we can come up with. First time I've had over 10,000 gold, so that's pretty cool. And we can ask our head of faith for gold. Let's get 750 from him. Okay, let's deal with this. Where is this happening? The Duchy of Lancaster. Interesting. Okay. This is not a small insurrection. This is the Duke of Lancaster. This is a pretty big deal. It's the Duke of Kent, actually, who's doing this. So we're going to need 
the help of our allies in this one for sure we're also going to call the other members of our dynasty which is basically the same thing we're going to call aragon we're going to call the holy roman emperor so everybody's going to join in on this one all right, well, if everybody sends all their troops, we now have 72,000 that we can put in the field against his 31,000. Uh, in the meantime, though, we're going to send our army north under the King of Ireland. And thus far, I don't see a large force. Okay, there's his large force down here. So we're going to go defeat this tiny force first. And then we'll try to intercept some small part of his army and not have to take on the whole thing until we get reinforcements but he's laying siege to multiple locations actually we're going to come down here and go after the main army which he will try to put together obviously who we got here we got some armies arriving it's going to take some time for all these armies to get put together All right, we're going to intercept part of his force here in Bedford. And that's ideal. Not having to take on the whole army at the same time. We can defeat it a little piece at a time. So there's a major victory there. We lost 620 killed. We killed 4,000. Let's take a look at the knights. I always like looking at this. Boy, they had a guy kill 46 in that one. But we captured him. Can we just execute this guy? He's a mayor. It's an act of tyranny. But you know what? Buh bye You he had 24 skill. We don't need an enemy like that fighting against us. We lost a bunch of sieges, but it didn't really hurt things that bad. Now we're gonna move toward another fight. We got armies all over the place. And he's gonna start concentrating on this uh, direction but here comes the huge army from the Holy Roman Empire that we won't even need helps to have powerful friends I don't know what the Duke of Kent was thinking with this Earl John of Angus was the main killer that time around honestly we don't have any great knights in our army alright so in the meantime we can imprison the Earl of Herefordshire. We're going to go ahead and do that. And now we've just got to spread out and start defeating these armies. I'm going to go for the capital of the Duchy of Kent. And we'll let my allies deal with all the other territories we need to deal with. So I'm hoping that if we take Dover, that'll put an end to this. It depends on if he's there. We may have to capture him. Oh, the Holy Roman Emperor is going to lose that battle there. All right, we caught him. How did that not put an end to this? All right, we're going to revoke his title. Oh, he's got a lot of titles. No wonder he was so powerful. We can only... Good night. Why would that be an act of tyranny? He revolted against me. Now right, we're going to start with the Earldom of Middlesex, which is where London is. We'll revoke that title from him. Beyond that, we just need to win this war. Which shouldn't be that difficult to do. My sister was released. I didn't know that she had been imprisoned. Okay, and now I'm going to take the Duchy of Kent from him as well. I don't think I'll do more than that just because I'm a little concerned about how that's all going to be viewed. Because every time we, we do those types of things, it's an act of tyranny and it causes some bad feelings with our vassals. And you can see that the King of Brittany is already not a fan, uh, nor is the King of Ireland. So we've got some work to do now with some of our fellow rulers maybe we'll grant some titles to some of these folks 
We'll see if that soothes their feathers at all. Let's see, where can we start? We have to give him something. What can I give him? Sussex? We'll give him Sussex. There you go. Okay, so it was actually... I believe she's the one who started this whole thing. She's the heir to the Duchy of Lancaster. Regardless, we're able to enforce our demands. That's the end of that. Let's disband the army. We do need a new steward. Let's take a look. Is that faction still going? The Independence faction. Started by the King of Brittany. We do have a couple of folks still in prison that we have to decide what to do with. If we get this guy to renounce all of these claims... We'll do it. Now the Duke of Lancaster. I wonder if we... Yeah, I don't want to take another title away from somebody. He's got a bunch of claims as well that we'll get him to renounce. Okay. All right, let's go to the Earldom of Warwickshire and let's upgrade our castle. We got a lot of money. We may as well start spending some of it. I'm going to look for some holdings that we can build somewhere. I want to look for titles though, or places though that are currently in my domain though. Um, Warwickshire, Suffolk. Suffolk's ours. Let's go over there to Suffolk. Construct a new holding. Um, not a city. A castle it is. Well, this is a problem. It looks like the Holy Roman Emperor, Emperor is going to lose his title. He's got somebody attacking him for his claim on the throne and he's got some pretty powerful allies to the point where I don't even really want to get involved because I've got 86,000 men and I just don't see how we can take on the Kingdom of Bohemia's massive armies at this point. So apparently uh, we've heard from a kinsman by the name of Adric that the King of Ireland is having an affair with the princess of Scotland. Uh, I don't know what that would mean, but I think we should probably just kind of let it go. My sinful acts come at a cost. Yeah, this war is going terribly for the Holy Roman Emperor. He's about to lose his title, which is bad because that means that my daughter's heir will no longer also be heir to the Holy Roman Empire, but she will have a claim on that title. Oh, actually things have started heading the, in the other direction. Wow, okay. We have an available dynasty legacy. Law. Uh, we could go all the way up to here. General opinion, max sway on schemes. Bounteous loins, no. Chance of inheriting good treats, that might be good. Traits, that might be good. I think we'll go with noble veins. Okay, so this makes me a little bit nervous. I don't know if I'm ready to pass the absolute crown authority law. I do have a massive army that I can command of 30,000. What I'm worried about is what can my vassals throw together? Because even just the Duke of Essex and the King of Brittany, if those two gang up and then you add the Duchess of Northumbria, uh, they can put together an army that could take care of mine easily. So I feel like... If I lose the Holy Roman Empire as an ally, which I'm very likely to, um, it might not be worth it to do that right now. So my granddaughters were captured during the latest siege. You can see those are the children of that marriage. And it looks like that 
that war might be over soon. Well, this is cool. The Knights Hospitalia um, grow. We need more land from which to organize our defense of the Catholic faith. Yes, you may join us. All right, all right. Get over yourself, Amis. Our castle was completed in Warwick. Counselor Beatrice died. She was the spy master. Okay, so uh, Princess Helen, my daughter, is unmarried. We should do something about that. That's my second daughter. Uh, the King of Denmark is 46, but that actually might be a really good match. We won't make it matrilineal, but we'll go ahead and propose that marriage. Excellent. Okay, I think it's been long enough that we probably should raise our armies and go help out the situation in the Holy Roman Empire. So we're going to go ahead and start sending our armies over there, and we will see what trouble we can get into with all of this. Maybe we can turn the tide. Let's take a look at the situation right now with that that war. Oh, it's not even letting me click on it. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so there's a crusade coming up. We have to designate a beneficiary for that. Let's go by rank. Who do we got here? Um, the Princess of Aquitaine. I don't know. My sister, perhaps? Yeah, let's go with my sister. All right. Our armies have arrived on the continent. Let's see what trouble we can get into. Who is this? These are the armies we have to go after. And that's some big armies. Oh, good. The war ended because it's no longer valid to continue. The guy pushing it must have... Must have died. My daughter and heir has fallen ill with smallpox. Oh my gosh. This is an enemy I cannot protect her from. Likely she's going to die from that. And my son-in-law, Yudin, died. Oh my goodness. This is going from bad to worse. So he's dead. So who's the Holy Roman Emperor now? Because I don't think it passed. Because we only had daughters. Ugh. So that's all for nothing. My two granddaughters are imprisoned. He died and therefore left the throne to someone else other than my granddaughter. Because I think that could only pass to sons. Either that or it was just an elective title. I'm not sure. Oh, that's why the war ended. Because the guy who was pressing his claim actually got the title. Uh, that sucks. My daughter is not looking good with her smallpox. Looks like one of my granddaughters was released. Ugh. She recovered. Jesus be praised. Excellent news. She is, however, single now. I don't know if we can get another marriage for her. Yeah, that would be close relations there. I'm not sure about that. All right, so we have the ability to create a new men-at-arms unit. And I'm thinking that it's time for some artillery. So that's nice. Uh, we can look and see what the effects are of those. 0.6 per day on the siege progress, which is signific significantly better than you can get with trebuchets or anything else. So let's make that happen. In fact, I wonder if we can eliminate... Yeah, let's destroy that. We're going to max this one out all the way up to the highest it can go. That's going to really help with our sieges. 
In fact, we're going to do two completely maxed out of those. That's going to help a ton with our ability to make sieges. Okay, what's going on here? We got a new princess of the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, that's, uh, she's not new. She just, we made an alliance with her because she's got a duchy that we will eventually inherit. We got to get this girl out. How do we get her released from prison? I guess we can't. Okay, the crusade begins. I have no idea what this is going to entail, but we haven't typically gotten involved in these. This one's massive. 100,000 on the Christian side, 60,000 on the Muslim side. The wife of Duke Peter of Mercia is plotting. Ugh. All right, we have the ability to lay foundation on a new university in Oxford. Excellent. So now, over time, we have founded both Cambridge and Oxford. Well, my health is going downhill, so that's not ideal. All right, victory in the crusade. I did not have to get involved in that one. I mean, I didn't gain anything for my benef beneficiary in this one, but that's not a big deal. The king of Scotland converted from Anglo-Saxon to Scots culture. Well, that's disappointing, but understandable. So my army, when completed, is going to be pretty substantial now, um, especially those cannons. So I think I'm going to go ahead and raise crown authority to absolute. Let's make it happen. I'm going to tick somebody off in my realm, no doubt. I'm 52 years old. Who have I killed, by the way? Oh, I killed, that's just the guy that I executed. All right, let's see who gets mad about this. So our major bit of concern, of course, would most likely be the Duke of Essex, uh, who, of course, we stripped a lot of titles from, so that's understandable. King of Ireland, the Duchess of Northumbria is a concern as well. Let's see if we can't calm her down a little bit with a bribe or two. Let's work on swaying her as well. So far, no factions. So it's gone off pretty much without a hitch. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up right there. It's 1388. We've got uh, just a couple generations left to play in this game before we move on to Europa Universalis IV. Emperor Edward IV, the scholar of Britannia, is now 52 years old. Uh, we've done pretty well for ourselves, all except for having sons, but that's not a huge deal. Uh, honestly, my children have done pretty well from, for themselves. If you look at the children, of course, uh, Anna died young, but she was the queen uh, in Aquitaine. Uh, Aleswith, my heir, was married to the um, heir to the Holy Roman Empire, but of course that did not work out so well, but she still is the, the uh, heir to my empire. Uh, and then her daughter uh, also holds a duchy title, uh, Princess Sarah is married into the Danish royal family, as is Queen Helen, my daughter, who is married to the king of Denmark. Uh, and then Benedicta is only 10, but we could probably find her a very good match as well. In fact, we've got a king available here. Looks like that's in Eastern Europe. Oh, Zeiss, that's the, uh, is that the kingdom that's right in the middle of the Holy Roman Empire? It is. Oh, excellent. I mean, he's old for her at the moment. But that would be a good match for a youngest daughter. So we'll wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. And we will see you again soon with the next episode. Thanks for watching.